Hello everyone, my name is Vakas Said. As I have told you in my previous video that I am going to start a web series on DCS system. This is the first lecture on JX300 XP DCS, in which we discuss the architecture and system scalability of JX300 XP DCS. So let's start now. First, we see the general introduction of JX300 XP. Complete system name is Web Field JX300 XP TCS, in which Web Field is the registered trademark of Subcon DCS. JX is the series name. 300 XP is the serial number. Previous variant are 100, 200, 300, 300 X, which I already explained in my Subcon intro video. DCS is the abbreviation of Distributed Control System. As per application, over 10,000 projects has done all around the world, mainly on the application of petrochemicals, chemical, thermal power, metal mining, and many more applications. Coming toward the system architecture of JX300 XP, as we have seen the system cabinet in the control room, in the system cabinet of GX300 XP, we have a redundant controller and a number of IO cages. Controller is connected with IO cages with the first level of SBUS, which is SBUS2. And then IO module are connected with the field instrument via SBUS S1. Then we have engineering station in our architecture. Engineering station is used for the system configuration, graphic window configuration, report manufacture, for programming, defining alarms, and transit C. This is connected with controller via redundant process control network SCNet2. It is called process control network because it achieves the connection between operation node and control node, transmit the real-time data information and control command between them. It applies or uses the industrial Ethernet switch for communication between nodes. Then we have our operator station which is directly connected to process control network SCNet2. As the communication between operation and control node is peer to peer, which we will discuss in our later videos what is peer to peer or client server connection. Each operator station can get data from controller and make it own historian it own historian depending upon its memory capacity a printer can also be connected for printing report alarms trends or real time screenshot of process then we have a special history data station which we use with lessons for storing long time history of alarms reports trends even logging of systems it can also be connected with the upper layer for transferring of alarm information or history data. Also, we have an OPC station for communication of real-time data between process control network, process information network and management information network. <coughs> also, OPC station can be used to transfer data to external source like some other PLC or IoT software supporting OPC communication. In management information network, you have advanced process control station for smoothing the process or reducing the sh shutdown of the plant. Also, you have ERP layer software which is helpful for decision making in business. Also, if you have other system cabinet with a controller on the plant different section, you can simply connect through industrial Ethernet switches on process control network SCNet2. Time synchronization server is used to achieve the system time synchronization so that all the system on the network has same time and uh, it will be helpful when any alarm came. And there will be no conflict in checking of error or finding the cause if any mishap occur at the site.
now we see the system scalability of jx 300 xp jx 300 xp sports 63 control station in one control node similarly it sports 72 operator station in one operation node these 72 operation station also include includes the engineering stations these control nodes and operation nodes are connected with each other via process control network SCNet2. As you see in the highlighted section that one control station data can be monitored and controlled by all the ES and OS in the network. Similarly, in this highlighted section you can see that one operating station can monitor or control all the control station which are present in the network in one control node. For that reason we can say that one OS can control and monitor up to 20,000 tags. Now we see the system scalability of one control station in detail. In the control station the first track is the power unit track. In this picture you can see that there are two redundant power supplies present. One pair of 10 ampere redundant power supply can be used for three racks only. The first rack of system cabinet contains the redundant controller in the first two slot of IO rack. One controller can support up to 8 IO rack, either it is local or remote. In the picture, you can see that this system cabinet contains 4 IO racks. Normally, one system cabinet can have maximum up to 6 IO racks. To complete the 8 IO racks, we normally use another system cabinet in which remaining 2 IO racks can, uh, are present. Each I.O. rack contains 16 slots for I.O. card instead of first I.O. rack. First I.O. racks contain 14 slots for I.O. card. We will see the I.O. rack detail in our further videos. One controller in a control station can support up to 512 analog input, 192 analog output, 2048 detail pulse or frequency signal and also 2048 digital output signal that's all from this video thank you for watching my video if you have any question regarding this video you can ask me in comment or you can directly connect me on email or on whatsapp